world outliner is basically equivalent to the unity hierarchy so you can select different things in here just like in unity and you can see they're then selected over here and just like unity if you mouse get your mouse in the in the game view over here you can hit f and that'll focus that object or you can also right click and choose focus and it'll then focus the object okay so the big difference here is uh well, two big differences are we have the name, just like you know, game object name. This would this is the the actor name of each of these things, and we have a type next to it. So that's the the first difference we'll see from Unity. Now, this one's really neat and something that is super handy. Anybody who's worked on large, complex projects will love this. You can actually create folders here, so you don't have to do that whole really ghetto nesting of empty game object garbage and try and mock folders, you can actually make folders and nest them. So any object you want, so say for example, cube mesh here, you can right click it and you could say, um, move to, and let's say we'll move it to arena. So we can move it into folders and we can create new folders. So really handy way of, of dealing with, uh, with your hierarchy there. No more nesting game objects for no reason. Uh, moving our, uh, further up around here on the outside, uh, you see this one doesn't have a tab like the rest of these. So you can drag the tab just like you could in anywhere, any other app where you're used to having uh, an interface that's customizable via drag and drop of the panels. Uh, this one doesn't have that. So instead it has this little yellow thing. So if we click that, we can then get the tab. And then if we wanted to hide it, we can right click and choose hide tab. So this bar up here is, uh, is basically uh, just like the Unity toolbar. It has a little bit more going on. Unity is basically just has a you know play, pause, uh, and step buttons. But this one, uh, you have your play button here, uh, build button here if you want to do build. And uh, we'll we'll go over some of these in future videos. But uh, you know for now, basically, as long as you know about the play button, so you can see the toolbar up there changed a little bit. So now it has a pause and stop, and now we're we're actually in the game, playing, and you can just push escape to jump out. And that basically is equivalent to pushing stop. So now we have uh, have control again back in the editor. So the only other thing here that might be of interest is the settings. And uh, you use settings, project settings pretty often. Uh, again, there's a ton of options in here. Disregard them. We won't need most of this stuff ever. All right, so working our way across, we have right here the scene view. So this will look pretty familiar to you uh, as uh, Unity users. You have uh, your pretty normal scene view now. Where it kind of differs a bit from Unity is there's not a separate game view. So you only get the scene view with Unreal. And when you push play, it kind of morphs into the game view. You'll see all the gizmos disappear, and now uh, we're just playing. So up here we have uh, we have various different tools for... Uh, for dealing with uh, manipulating scene objects. Let me just go ahead and click on something over here. So you can see we have a transform tool and it, it works just like Unity's does. Uh, same hotkeys too. W chooses the transform tool. E chooses the rotation tool. And R chooses the scale tool. And you can push the space bar also to toggle between them. So all that uh, should be pretty familiar as Unity user. And again, if you like, uh, if you're a mousy kind of person, you can go up here and you can mouse on these to choose them as well. Uh, just like Unity's uh, toolbar, we have uh, over here a cycle between uh, world and local for the object tools. Let me just transform this guy a little bit so we can see that. So you can see this is the world. So when we click on it like this, we're now in local space, just like Unity. Uh, now here's something that differs greatly from Unity and you are going to love these tools so up here we have snapping tools so this toggles snap of movement on and off this is snap of rotation and this is snap of scale but right next to the toggles we have values that the snap will work for so yes unity does have snapping but it's absolute crap anyone who's ever used that sucker knows how bad it really is uh it, it does relative snapping which is all but useless i mean i can't tell you how many times i've rewritten and made my own editor scripts to do proper snapping but now it's built into the engine so when you drag things you can see they snap and they snap in whatever increment we set up here 
So we can change the rotation, for example, to 45 degree snap. And then when we come over here and use the rotation tool, you can see we get a nice 45 degree snap. Super, super, super handy. Makes laying out a level so much quicker. And same goes for scale. So this uh, this next option over there, um, just trying to give you a look at how fast I'm moving. So that's what this is. This is the speed. So let's say we're working on a, a big giant landscape, like an 8K by 8K landscape. Get up the speed and really cruise around. And if you're working on something, uh, you know, small details, you can you can drop the speed down. And I should mention when I'm moving around here, it's identical to Unity. Right click and you use WASD to move around and then Q and E are your down and up. And you know, that's about it. That's about all we need to go over for the scene view. There's, there's a couple other options we'll use in future videos. Uh, but uh, you know, generally, as long as you can navigate yourself around, you'll be good to go. Uh, one handy little thing though is this. Uh, so if we click on this, we get a four up view. And uh, you know, anybody who's worked in, uh, in 3ds Max, Blender, Maya, whatever, any 3D modeling program, you'll be super familiar here. You end up with three ortho uh, views and then your normal perspective view. And if you want to maximize them, you can just click on them and jump right in. Okay, last is our modes tab over here. This is the one thing that differs from Unity. So Unity doesn't have this equivalent modes tab. Uh, what Unity does have is uh, is different menus that it, it it mimics this material. So this would be essentially like your your create asset kind of menu. So if we we have a, a list right here that breaks down the different objects. So if we click on lights, we have all of our different kinds of lights. And uh, and while we're in here, you see this little question mark. Uh, you can click this to jump right to the documentation on the Unreal website, and you can see it jumps us right to directional lights. So these little uh, question marks are going to end up uh, being in different places in the engine. And now that you've seen what they do, you'll know that you can just click on them to go to documentation. And, uh, you know, these are, again, just uh, the different uh, available objects. They would be actors in Unreal. This would be a game object in Unity that you can take and just drag into the scene view, just like in Unity. That's all there is to it. Okay, so... Next bit over here, we have something that I dream about in Unity all the time. This is a, basically a, a vertex and texture painting system that works right in the editor. And yes, you can buy different third-party assets to do this kind of stuff, but nothing beats something properly built into the engine. There's just no comparison. So this works exactly like you'd expect it to. You can choose a color and you can choose the channel that it's painting into and then you just click and drag and you can paint and you have your various tools here to deal with it. And uh, you can also do vertex weight painting and texture painting. Really awesome. It's something that I wish was in Unity. Uh, moving on, we have landscape. Again, something I wish was in Unity. So you'll see this giant uh, green... Uh, grid over here. So I, this isn't actually creating a landscape yet. You have to click the create button. This is just showing you previewing what it's going to create. So Unreal landscapes are awesome. Each of these squares is actually a separate component. So now remembering before what I was talking about, you can have more than one component and each of those on a, on a particular actor and each of those components can have its own transform. So Unreal takes a single actor and landscape and breaks it up into multiple components so your your terrain is automatically broken up into chunks and you can choose the chunk size really awesome and on top of that you also get LOD for each of your chunks all automatically built into the engine so you can make massive landscapes and Unreal just handles all of the details of chunking it and breaking up into and giving you different LODs out of the box and then you can you can even stream these different things so you can break them up into further parts and load and unload them on the fly. And all of this is done like literally so easy. It's like next to no code. Actually, it is no code for level streaming, but I digress. Uh, so for landscape, once you create the landscape, you get your traditional sculpt and paint tools. And again, these are these are super powerful tools uh, that we'll take a look at later on. 
Next is the foliage tab. So foliage over here is uh, is super cool. You you can actually take foliage and you can paint foliage anywhere. And foliage doesn't necessarily have to be bushes and trees. Foliage can be uh, all kinds of different things. It can be uh, it can be painted on all kinds of different things as well. So you can see there's different filters here. So landscape static mesh and BSP is basically saying I want when I paint I want to do the painting on uh, BSP, which I'll explain that in a second. Um, static mesh, which is basically all of these different meshes. You know, you, you are familiar with that from, uh, from Unity, I'm sure. And landscape, so you can paint on all of those different things. And this just goes into the details of them. So BSP, something I just touched on a second ago. So this thing over here, this uh, octagon, I believe it is, I created. This is a BSP. BSPs are basically really neat little tools for gray box in a level you can you can lay out a level really quickly with this so i'm in geometry editing mode so you can see now that i can select faces and with these faces you can actually move the verts or you can ooh, so extrude only works with local coordinate system so that's something you would have to flip the local and i believe it just flipped for me so now once you're in local, you can see we're doing an extrusion on this. And let's extrude again. I'll drag it over here. Oh, oh, it only lets me extrude straight out. Okay, so it's obviously not a full 3D modeling program, but uh, the tools are really handy for gray box and a level. You can you can build up a level uh, really quickly with this. I mean, in just seconds, you can have, have your geometry laid out. So there's no need to go back and forth between your 3D modeling program. Really handy tools. Uh, I'm just going to show you one more thing with BSPs and then we're done for today. So geometry is where we find our BSPs. So I'm going to just take a, a sphere, for example, and I'm just going to shove it in the scene for now and we'll position it. So if you had a couple different static meshes in Unity and you put them on top of each other like this, you know, that's kind of what you'd expect to see, right? With BSPs, things work a little bit differently. So BSPs can be either additive or subtractive. So this is where things get neat. So now look what that just did. So that BSP is subtracting away from the other one. So you can actually create some uh, some pretty neat geometry. You know, it's just a quick example. You could make a gigantic cube and then put a smaller cube in it and have it be subtractive. And there you go, you have a room just like that. If you wanna put windows in it, you just throw some subtractive cubes in there and you have windows. If you have Unreal downloaded, Feel free to make yourself a, a little empty project and just come in here and, and try and get comfortable with, with the different tools. I mean, if you use Unity daily, this will take you all of about two minutes to, to get comfortable moving things around. And you're really going to like the snapping. Uh, get comfortable moving moving the, the, the viewport around here and, and being able to dive in and, and place objects. And that's about it for this first round. For the next tutorial we're actually going to do a follow along kind of thing. So you'll want to have Unreal ready to roll and we'll jump in and actually start making something. All right. Thanks for watching.